We are reading from the book of John chapter 14. We are reading from the first verse through to verse 8. I'm reading from the new King James Version. I'm reading from the new King James Version. I'm just going to be short and straightforward. Today we are talking about the Holy Spirit. That if we want to be God conscious, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hallelujah. We need that endowment of the power of the Holy Spirit. We need that empowerment. With our strength, we cannot do it. Hallelujah. If, if we are world conscious because of the body that we have, if we are self-conscious because of our souls, the, we, we are only going to live in the two-dimensional world. And we need the third dimension, which is the dimension of the Holy Spirit. You know, you know when, when, when the enemy can accost you, and, and put you in the corner and bring uh, uh, limitation in your body, bring sickness in your body, make you feel like you, you no longer matter and people look down upon you. You, you, will know, you know that you will not have the zeal to wake up and do things. Even the things you aspire to do, you will be discouraged to follow them. So many people have forsaken their dreams. A lot of people have left their place of calling in life because there's so many things that are not going well in their lives. But today I'm here to introduce you to the Holy Spirit, who is another helper, who comes to help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are, if you are self-conscious and things don't go well in your emotions, you know, you are not happy, um, you are depressed, Things don't go well. Uh, the enemy can lock you in that dimension. But today, I want to introduce you to the dimension of the spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 1 through to verse 8, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, in verse 4, it says, And where I go, you know the way, and you know me. Now, verse, 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 verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? You know, I love Thomas because the other guys, they were confused, but they did not say anything. But Thomas, you know what he said? No. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me and you would have known the Father also, and from now on, you know him and and have seen him. Now, Philip comes and a guy again, he says, man, <laughs> we've never seen the father. Um, and Jesus said to him, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. If you've known me, you have known the father. Now, I want to have three volunteers quickly. Can I have three volunteers that will help us demonstrate this simple passage of scripture? Three volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, in, 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 in John uh, chapter 16, Jesus is saying it is expedient, it is important, it is crucial for me to go. Because if I don't go, then the comfort of the Holy Spirit will not come. And he says, and when he comes, then he will teach you all things. And then he says he will reveal more about me, things I did not tell you about myself. Now, in chapter 14, he says to them, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. All right? And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the way. When they say, show us the way, he says, no, you know the way because I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he's saying, in other words, if you think you know the, the truth, if you think you know the way, if you think you know this life, um, you don't know anything yet until the Holy Spirit comes. Then he's going to reveal you more of the truth. He's going to reveal you more of the way. He's going to reveal you more of this life. 
In other words, you only know the introduction until the Holy Spirit comes. He will teach you all things and he will reveal you, reveal more about me. Now, now, um, I'm going to ask you, Paduri, to come and uh, come. Your, your name is again, Mike. Peggy. Okay, come, Peggy. Peggy and uh, Paduri, I want you guys to stand behind me. All right, stand behind me and gently come and stand in front of me. This is what Jesus was saying to us. And he says, to us, you can face me. He's saying to them, I have to go away. All right. This is the Holy Spirit. This is God the Father. Like the God the Son. Okay. And then this is God the Father. Now, he's, Jesus is saying, I am with you guys. You, I, you have been experiencing miracles. I, I came to the wedding of Cana. And they ran out of wine. Things were getting gloomy. And I turned water into wine. I saved the occasion. And Jesus said, look, there was a time a woman who was on the way to bury her only son. She was a widow. And Jesus came, stopped the funeral, raised that young man from the dead. Jesus did a lot of great things. You know, when there were 5,000 men with their families stuck in the wilderness, he fed them with two fish and five loaves of bread. Jesus did a lot of great things. He was there to be a helper. He saved a lot of people. The blind people who came, born blind, he opened their eyes. Those who were born with evil, so those who were attacked with evil spirit, like the man of Gadara who was living in the cemetery, who'd cut himself with stones, cry out the whole day and night. They tried to restrain him with chains. He will break them. But immediately when Jesus landed in the area of Gadara, the Bible says this man came to Jesus and Jesus drove out those demons. And his family saw him for the first time after many years, uh, sane, and he was restrained. I mean, in the book of, of John chapter 5, a man who was uh, at the pool of Bethesda, who was sick for 38 years, is almost half of his life, this man paralyzed. Jesus came at the pool and said to him, take your bed and go home. Jesus came and he did great things. But he was saying to them, I needed to help everyone. The story of his great beloved friend, Lazarus. He got an invitation to say, your friend is sick to death. And Jesus was delayed because he was doing other things. And they, he, Lazarus died. After he buried him, Jesus took another four days not coming. And immediately when Jesus came to Bethany, Mary Kay, no, no, Martha first met Jesus and said, if you were here, my brother would have, wouldn't have died. And Jesus says, you know what? He's going to come back to life. And he said, yeah, I know on the day of resurrection. And then when he went to Mary, Mary rehearsed the same thing. You could see that they were offended in Jesus. Said, Look, we did a lot for you. We were your best supporters. And we gave an invitation. You did not show up. And Jesus said, take me where you buried him. They said, no, no, what? Uh, he's been buried for four days. His body is already smelling in the grave. Jesus said, take me there. And when he got there, he says, roll away the stone. And those were instructions, simple instructions. And they were, they were reluctant to obey those instructions. And immediately when Jesus was standing at the tomb, the Bible says the power of God came upon him and he started to cry. People looked at him, this, he loved this man so much. It was not about the love he had for, for, for Lazarus, but it was about the power of God that people can see that he's the God who can demonstrate things. Amen. He called Lazarus out of the grave. And the Bible says he came out alive. And, 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 and Jesus could only do this at a the, at the certain place at the time. He couldn't do it for everyone. When, when you read the Bible in the book of Mark chapter 5, Jesus was on his way to the house of Jaira because Jaira's daughter was sick. And along the way, the Bible says this woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus and Jesus stopped, started addressing her. And after addressing uh, this woman with the issue of blood, he continued. He started actually with the men who had demons, the area of the gathering. He wasted time there. Then there was a woman with the issue of blood. When he was done with all that, then he says, let's go to Jairus' house. When he arrived there, he was too late. The girl already died. And I believe the people were offended. That we waited and waited and waited. And we were the ones who actually gave the initial invitation. We bought you a ticket. To come here. And then when we figure, we begin to say, oh, we are going to go to the house. We are going to go to the house. 
And then Jesus says, she's not dead, but she's sleeping. The people who were waiting, they turned their mood from being sad and they started laughing. And says, we know what death is. Actually, the doctors came and certified her dead. And Jesus said, out. He chased them out of the room. He took the girl by the hand. But Jesus was saying, listen, all this can be multiplied if you allow me to leave so that the Holy Spirit can come. So, so Jesus is saying it is important for, for, for you guys to allow me to shift. As I shift, I am going to take you, the church, and I'm going to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. And then when I introduce you to the Holy Spirit, come, you, you just follow him. And then I am going to go away. But he's going away. All right? Thank you. He's going away. No, stay behind her. He's going away. It doesn't mean he goes away. All right? The Holy Spirit, when he comes to dwell in us, he says, I will come and dwell in you. But when he dwells in us, it is the Father and the Son. Do you understand? Now, now this is just the, the, we swapping the roles. Um, it, was, it was Jesus on earth. And he says, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Okay? And, but he says, I'm going away so that the Holy Spirit can come. Then when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes with the Son and the Father. But when Jesus was walking on earth, he was walking on earth and he says, I am the embodiment of the Father. I don't say things I want to say. What I say is what I've heard the Father say. And then now he says, but I, I, I have to make it easy because now me and the Father are limited by this body because I cannot be everywhere at the same time. But he says, if I go away, the Holy Spirit will come. And then we will come and dwell in you in the form of the Holy Spirit, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Ha. So, so once you, you, you've accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 9, it says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to him. Now, in other words, every believer, every child of God, they have the Holy Spirit in them. Whether you speak in tongues or not, you have the Holy Spirit in you. So the Holy Spirit doesn't come by himself. When you open your heart and you allow Christ, when we, when we, he says, I'm standing at the door of your heart, I knock. If you open and I come and dwell in you. When we say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be a Lord and Savior on, 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 in my life. You are inviting the Trinity to come and dwell in you. Thank you, guys. Now, in John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, it says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Okay, and then the other, another helper means another comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener. That's in the amplified, the standby, to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. And take to its heart because it does not see, see him or know him. But you know him. Now, when he says to you, I, it is important that I go away so that the Holy Spirit can come. And when he comes, I will ask the Father, he will give you another helper. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we have help. We are not by ourselves. We have help from above. When, when it looks like we are facing the mountain, we've got help. Supernatural help is here to, to, to encourage us. When it looks like we are losing the battle, we are not losing the battle. We've got help from above. Hallelujah. When it looks like we are sad, we've got another comforter, the Holy Spirit. He comes to comfort us in our sorrow. We've got the advocate, the one who speaks on our behalf, the one who pleads our case. Why do we need an advocate? The Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He stands day and night accusing the saints. And you, you can take this very light, the issue of condemnation. The Bible says for those who, cry, those who are in Christ, there is no more condemnation. The enemy wants to condemn you. You cannot pray and pray with faith and believe that God has heard your prayer and you walk away 
knowing that my prayer has been answered. Why the enemy keeps on condemning you? You are not smart enough. You are not anointed enough. Uh, you don't pray enough. Your faith is too small. And, and, and he knows that once he, he introduces doubt in the mix, you're not going to receive anything from God. The Bible says, uh, if you have faith, small as a mustard seed, and you don't doubt in your heart, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. The enemy wants to introduce doubt. And that doubt comes through self-condemnation. You look at yourself and say, I did not speak well with so-and-so. I don't qualify. And, and, and grace means free will of God, free gift, unmerited favor. Uh, you, 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 you don't have to have, to have merits to receive grace. Once there are merits, then it's no longer grace. So the enemy wants to condemn you. That's why you need an advocate. Because the Bible says that he is our righteousness. It's not our self-righteousness, but Jesus is our righteousness. In the book of Ephesians 1, verse 3, all right? In, 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 the, in the message translation, it says, He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings before the foundation of the world. It says, because we are wrapped around Christ. In other words, when God looks at you, he sees Christ in us and then he he imputes on us the righteousness of god the righteousness of christ we are not standing before god through works but we are standing before god through the finished work of calvary through the blood of jesus the bible says he has given us the holy spirit as a mark as a seal oh lord have mercy um, when, when, when you are going out there and you want to know who are, who, who are people in your team, what do you do? You either give them um, red t-shirts, yellow t-shirts, or you, you give them uh, uh, armbands. But there, there must be a mark, a seal that says they belong to the same team. And now when God looks at us and he looks at the world and he wants to know who are those who are in his team, he looks at the Holy Spirit in us which is the mark and the seal and says, these ones are mine. And these ones, they overcome the world. Hallelujah. So when we have the Holy Spirit, when God in heaven, he looks down, he doesn't see your flesh. He doesn't see your emotions. He doesn't see all these things. He sees the Holy Spirit. In other words, when, 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 when you are plagued in your flesh uh, with sickness and disease, you are, you are burdened with emotional problems. Listen, God says you can overcome because he, that when he looks at you, he sees you in the spirit and he wants you to renew your mind to migrate from the life of defeat into the life of the fullness of God. Because he, he doesn't see you through the eyes of the world. He sees you through the eyes of the spirit. He sees the Holy Spirit. Now, how do we do this? When the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. And then he will teach you more and tell you more about Christ, about God the Father and the Son. Now, we, we've got to allow him. We've got to yield to him. We've got to look at him and say he is our advocate. When the enemy comes and wants to condemn you, you've got to know your stand and say there is no more condemnation. For those who are in Christ, I am not going to yield to, your, to the shortcomings. I am not going to allow myself uh, uh, to be discouraged because of where I come from, where, uh, where I grew up, the level of my education, uh, my connection with my forefathers. I am now a brand new creation. If any man is in Christ, he's a brand new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. So children of God, I want you to know that God is saying to us, he is giving help. If you need help, help is here. And that help comes with angelic instructions. Angels are out there waiting for you, child of God, to take your rightful position. And there are, the Bible says there are ministering spirits they are waiting for those who speak the language of heaven and they will be going up and down 
on the Son of Man, waiting for you to ask, waiting for you to make requests, making, waiting for you to make declarations, waiting for you to use the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. They are there to comfort you. They are there to defend you. Make sure that they plead your case before the Lord. They are there to intercede for you. The Holy Spirit is there to intercede for you, to plead your case, to pray for you. In the, in the book of Romans chapter 8, it says the Holy Spirit prays for us with groans that are too deep for words to utter. The Holy Spirit prays. That's what, that, that's what the scripture is saying. The Holy Spirit prays for you with groans that are too deep for words to utter. In other words, when your language fails you, and you are so deep in, in, in sorrow. Or, or, or you, you, you know you want to express something, but you don't have vocabulary to say it. Allow the Holy Spirit to groan. And pull it deep from your innermost being. And allow the Holy Spirit to help you bet something in the name of Jesus. Things that God wants to do on earth, he has already released them. But God is looking for men and women who are going to bet those things. Can I just say this, guys? If you look at humanity, there are people that are so, so successful that they impact the world so much, individuals. And those individuals are not special. It's those individuals who have found something about themselves that I can, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But there are individuals who are so limited by what they know. They don't want to go beyond what they don't know. They don't want to go out and test the uncharted territories. Um, we can build big things here on this earth. But few people are willing to go out there and stretch themselves. We are okay with comfort zones. We are okay with less stress. If you are not willing to be stretched, then you are not going to be stressed. Because when, when once you are stretched, there's going to be a lot of stress in your life. But let me tell you, when you are stretched with so much stress in your life, you will be able to reach out to territories that most people would not even be able to touch that level or those levels. Allow the Lord to stretch you. Because there's so much that you can do. If in your mind is telling you that stretching is too much, you are on the breaking point. You are not on the breaking point. God knows how much you can take. Allow, most of us are going to go out there and get to heaven and we will discover that uh, we did not take risks. Um, we, we were satisfied with all the things we have. But there was still so much we could have done with our lives. God knows we're going to make mistakes. And God, God is not concerned about the mistakes you are making. Because he knows how to take those mistakes. Make them to work in the ingredients of what he wants to make out of you. And when you taste the final product. You won't taste part of those mistakes. Because they'll be working into this final product. The concern is that things you did not get to do. It's, it's not the mistakes. Things you've never got to do. And, and those things are the ones who are supposed to make you. What, I want you to ask this simple question. What are the things you are afraid of doing? Which places you are supposed to go and you are afraid to go? What, what, there are projects you are supposed to start but you are afraid your mind is running before you and and show you all the impossibilities and say what if what if what if if we remove all the what what ifs and and step into who god has called us to do and say i'm willing to do this if it doesn't work it's okay but i'm willing to do this and i'm telling you guys if we are going to go and do what god has called us to do we can do great exploits. Let me just say this, then we're going to have the communion. Quite interesting is that uh, the Holy Spirit 
is here with us. What is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? What, why, why do we have the Holy Spirit in our life? Number one, he's there to bring inspiration in our lives. When, when every motivation fails to inspire you, allow the Holy Spirit to inspire you. And the Holy Spirit will, 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 will take you to places where it looks impossible. Ezekiel chapter 37, the Holy Spirit took Ezekiel into a valley of dry bones. Did not, did not just give him a, a, a motivation and say, Ezekiel, you know, when you get there, things will be easy. No, no. The Holy Spirit took him right into a valley. And before he could do anything, the Holy Spirit carried him around the valley to see the extent of damage that was in that valley. Bones were dry, and Ezekiel says they were very dry. God had to show him that, you know what, these bones, they are actually very dry and scattered all over the valley. And then God asked him a question, son of man, do you believe that these bones can live? That is why it is impossible to please God without faith. Those who come to him must believe that he exists and he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then immediately when Ezekiel was standing there and the Holy Spirit was there to say to him, I want you to speak to the bones and say, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In chapter 2 in the book of Ezekiel, the Holy Spirit inspired Ezekiel. Ezekiel has been inspired by the Holy Spirit when he was in the valley. Yes, he was, he was, he was, he was at the end of his weeds, but he knew that, you know what, I've seen God inspiring me in impossible situations. And when God says, speak to the dry bones, Ezekiel opened his mouth and he started to prophesy to the bones. And immediately when he opened his mouth, the Bible says bones started to move. The Spirit of God came upon the valley and bones started to move. There was a big sound, rattling of bones. And I'm here to say the Holy Spirit is here to tell you things. They might look impossible in your mind. Do not rely on your own understanding. I want you to walk by faith in the name of Jesus. That project that you are about to embark on, it might require you to have some few thousands it might require you to have few millions but i want you to walk by faith step out of your comfort zone do not rely on your mind do not rely on your emotion but i want you to be god conscious and step into the area where god wants you to be in the name of jesus brother charles men and women of our age and your age are the ones who struggle because you look at yourself you know when you are younger you look at yourself on the mirror. You pride yourself on your strength. You pride yourself on your beauty. You try. You, you 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 pride yourself on many things. But when you come to a certain age where things look like I am not physically strong anymore, I am not looking as handsome and beautiful as I used to look, and then you 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 start to let go. But God is saying in this season. He, he wants to turn around people because it's not going to be on the arm of flesh. Abraham was, was 75 years old when the Lord called him and said, walk blameless before me. I'm about to make a nation out of you. Abraham believed God and he believed God for 25 years before that thing was fulfilled. God is saying to you, age must never be a limit in your life in the name of Jesus. Listen, resources around should not be a limit in your life. God is about to open doors for you. He is about to give you things that your mind has never imagined. But you've got to step out of being well conscious, self conscious, and be God conscious. And once you allow yourself to be God conscious, listen, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will come and dwell in you. Allow yourself to be introduced to the, to, the, to the Holy Spirit, the one who will come and teach you all things. And not only teach you all things, but to introduce you to the truth that is more deeper. He will bring revelation in your life. He will show you the way. If you think you know the way, no, no. You only know what you are taught at school. Do not allow your qualification, your, your degrees to limit you. Says, I am a surveyor. I am an, a, an electrician. God wants to take you beyond your qualifications. Can I say this? And this will sound funny. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm surprised that you find a lot of people who are 
in counseling, psychiatry, psychology, social workers. They, they know how to teach people, train people, in, help them with interventions. But when things come to their life, they struggle. I know people who did finances and you look at their finances are not in order. That's why you need higher knowledge. Because, the, the, listen, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? But he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will, he will teach you all things. In other words, if you think you know Jesus, and, and you don't allow the Holy Spirit, you, you have missed the Lord. Because he's going to teach you uh, more about Jesus. He will give you deeper revelations. That when, 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 when it comes to you, say, I have the last amount of money. Do I have to give or spend it on myself? In the Old Testament, he showed us some sporadic examples like the widow of Zarephath who had the last bin of oil and the last jar of oil, uh, the last bin of flour and the last jar, jar, jar of oil and already expressed her fears to the prophet and said, this is the last meal for me and my son to eat and die. And the man of God, through the prompting of the Spirit, says, bake for me first. And that woman obeyed, and the Bible says, she was sustained throughout that season of her mind. If, if we are going to walk according to our senses, we are conscious of ourselves. And being self-conscious, you are limited by your consciousness, but the, the ability of God can take you outside the realm of your limitation. God can take you outside the level of your talent and your gifting. He, he's about to do great things that the world will be surprised, but muyelo, yes, muyelo, because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the very Peter who denied Jesus was the one who stood with the other 11 guys, and then they stood and they said, you men of Jerusalem and Jewish people, they started preaching to them that thousands of people got saved. Why? Because they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Fearful disciples who were hiding when Jesus was crucified were the very ones who came and spoke boldly in front of those who crucified their master. Why? Because they were no longer depending on the arm of flesh. They were depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. We are going to have communion. I want to give you just two stories that will really help you. If, if we are fighting battles with our own flesh, we are going to lose. Back in 1985, during the, 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 the riots that were hijacked by criminals, I remember this vividly, there were, there were a lot of, 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 of um, uh, criminal activities. People were uh, raping young girls in the name of political struggles. They were looting. Uh, they were stealing, breaking into people's homes. And, and it was take, this thing was taking over young people. And I remember when the schools were opened, reopened, we, we started in our ACM. We started praying every Monday uh, and Wednesdays. Then we, we had this, this big room. It was used as um, a woodwork. We used to pray in that woodwork uh, uh, room, fasting without fail. Every Monday break uh, and every Wednesday, it, we, time for us to pray. And revival broke in our school that we started to see young people getting saved, getting saved. And it didn't move from only our school. It went to almost all the high schools in Emalathen. This is very interesting, that we started having our meetings monthly at Linville Hall. I'm telling you, Linville Hall, um, it's a huge place, but we had our meetings Thursday afternoons. We will meet there for, for, for our meetings. It was like an explosion of high school kids getting saved in numbers. And I'm telling you, I remember the atmosphere was like yesterday that when we walk in there, you, you could literally feel the presence of God in those meetings. We did not have instruments, nothing. We would sing vocal. 
but but it would be like you would hear the sound of young people clapping hands and praising God Thursday afternoon high schools will come together just to worship God and I'm telling you when when the, when we allow the Holy Spirit we will not be carrying these things with our strength it will be not we, all the obstacles will still be there but we will know how to navigate walk on top of them because we have revival the holy spirit we have we have unleashed him and allow him to do what he can do best when 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 i was at the at the technicon the same thing happened that it was it was during those days of riots we were fighting the management and all these things but god broke out God broke out so much that we 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 were we were fellowshipping in a place, uh, you know, it was called a recreational center that would sit about three, three fifty, three hundred and twenty people. But we 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 preached the gospel in that place. We would do open air services. We would go room by room. And the end of 1993, we were meeting in the gymnasium and would have over a thousand students coming every Sunday to worship the Lord. And, and I'm telling you guys, when when the Holy Spirit comes, things that were difficult, things we were pulling ourselves to do, God started to convict people's hearts. What 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 is impossible with man is is possible with God. But the problem is that we 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 are self conscious. Uh, we are just a church on the corner of Elizabeth and Ara Street. Uh, we have so many people who are not committed. We are running short of Sunday school teachers. We don't have youth facilitators. People are not giving their tithes and offering. But can we allow the Holy Spirit? And once we allow Him, what happened in the book of Acts, the Bible says people brought all the things at the feet of the apostles. And the Bible says there was no one poor in lack amongst them. The Bible says those who were being saved were added daily. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was unleashed. The Holy Spirit was allowed to move. Listen, when He comes, He will convict the world of sin and righteousness. The reason things are not happening is because your body and your soul, they need to come and partner with your spirit so that God can use you as a vehicle to turn around the city of Emalacheni. We need revival and revival is here. And when revival is here, we are not going to be limited. God is looking for people who are going to move. Somebody says, how do we start? You know where you start? You do it by faith. When, 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 when Joshua was about to go to the promised land, God said to Joshua, you were going to cross the river Jordan. And Joshua says, how are you going to do it? God says, get the priest who are bearing the ark on their shoulders. And then he says, they are going to cross. But the river was still flowing. He says, immediately they get their feet wet inside the river is going to stop flowing. It, it means we've got to go by faith. We need to start when we don't see any sign. Uh, those who observe the clouds will not sow the seed. We are not going to observe the clouds. We know and believe that it is done. Even if we don't see any sign, but we believe it is done. We believe, we, we enlarge the place of our meeting. And then we prepare for more souls to come. We prepare for more people to be born again. We prepare that there's going to be healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Faith is preparing yourself for a harvest when you don't see even a sign that there's going to be an abundance. And that is exactly where we need to be. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Father, we are thankful this morning that we have the Holy Spirit helping us, strengthening us, comforting us, helping us, encouraging us, and giving us vision for the future. And we know that we are about to make a big impact in our city and in our province. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We are not going to wait until we see things, but we are going to move. And as we move, you are going to empower us. 
in Jesus name may you empower your people this morning oh father may you touch them may you stir the desire to go and do exploits for the kingdom to do the impossible to be stirred up to walk and stand and be counted in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father we thank you in Jesus name hallelujah amen we are going to partake on the communion can we stand if you have received your elements stand with me the bible says the same night jesus was crucified he took bread he broke it and said this is my body that is broken for for you do this in remembrance of me and i want us to partake in jesus name Thank you Father that we don't have to live in brokenness anymore. You have taken our brokenness upon yourself that we can live in victory. Even those that feel like they are still broken in their souls, Lord, I pray that let them migrate into a God conscious environment where they see themselves the way you see them. See them complete in Christ in Jesus name. As, as, we, as we partake and drink this cup, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Now the old has been removed, now the new. You are pledging yourself, says, I don't live in brokenness anymore. I don't live in defeat anymore. I am in this new covenant. And in this new covenant, I am the righteousness of God. In this new covenant, I'm blessed coming in and go, blessed going out. I am not cursed, but I'm blessed in this new covenant. I want us to partake in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we, we thank you for this service. May your people walk out of this place. As we, as we, as we pray this week for the ladies' conference and for the outreach we know that there are going to be a big harvest of souls. We, we don't see ourselves as a, a small group, but we see ourselves as impactors because we have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the resources that we are going to have 20, in 2022. We'll have enough money to, 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 to buy the capex. We have enough money to do and cover every expense. In Jesus' name, amen. We call it done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.